Wes Olszewski, author of Great Lakes Maritime History books. Uh, I have here a little baby food jar, and it has in it one of the most popular cargoes carried on the Great Lakes, coal. So much coal was carried on the Great Lakes, and so much coal was lost on the Great Lakes, that today, storms will blow coal up onto the beach. To this day, coal comes up on the beach. Interesting. This is some beach coal. Often when folks watch lake freighters sail by them, they ask themselves, what are those boats carrying? In this segment, we'll look at some of the most carried cargoes from the past and from right now. In the early days of steamboating on the lakes, the most commonly carried cargo was people, both rich and poor, tycoons of business, and immigrants headed west. The opening of the locks at Sault Ste. Marie also opened the way for cargoes. Downbound came the riches of copper, here we see the steamer Baltimore making the first ever downbound passage. The date was June 18, 1855. On that same day, another lucrative cargo began passing through the Sioux. High Society Tourists. Passengers from the highest levels of society residing in the big cities of the Lower Lakes decided that it was the in thing to do. Venture to the wilds of the wilderness of Lake Superior. Soon tourists were making the round-trip adventure in the greatest of plush comfort and paying top dollar to do so. The fare was $24 per person, which would be $714 per head today. It's interesting to note that until about 1870, most of the cargoes being transported by steamboat on the lakes were either in barrels or ingots. Barrels were a mainstay and it was not uncommon for a vessel to have more than 3,000 barrels aboard containing everything from nails to flour to whiskey to pork. Nearly all of the copper that came down from Lake Superior was in ingot form, seen here stacked neatly on the dock. Starting after the Civil War, the design of Great Lakes bulk freighters evolved quickly. Vessel designers soon cleared the midships area in order to make hatch unloading faster and easier. Boats were soon being made out of steel rather than wood. Iron ore replaced copper as the treasure of the Lake Superior region, and the size of the bulk carriers rapidly grew into what we commonly see today. Their bulk cargoes, however, remained pretty much the same. Limestone used in blast furnaces to separate impurities in the molten iron. This rock that I picked up at the Rogers City Pit is filled with countless fossils of saltwater shellfish that swam in the ocean that covered the area more than 300 million years ago. Grain. This grain that you see here was loaded into the J.L. Mothay when I was aboard her in December of 1992. It is simply designated Protein 14.3. Coal, used in everything from being baked into coke and fed to blast furnaces during the steel making process to generating power for millions of people. This is spillover coal that I got as the Sam Lod was unloading at the Consumers Power Plant in Essexville, Michigan. I doubt that the power company will miss it. Natural iron ore, once the lifeblood of America's steel production. Today, it is rarely carried on freighters. This is spilled ore that I recovered from under the abandoned Great Northern Dock in Superior, Wisconsin. So great was the amount of ore loaded there that in some areas, the spillage alone is nearly four feet deep. This is taconite. It is made from low-grade iron ore crushed to a powder. Then powerful magnets separate the high-grade ore and it is rolled into these grape-sized pellets. 
This is the primary cargo carried by lake freighters today. And thus you have it. What they carried in those boats then and now. Thank <laughs> you.